Hi everyone and welcome once more to A Plus Exquisite Decor. It is so awesome that you stopped by because I am eager to share with you a transformation that is very close to my heart. It is my very first reupholstering of a sofa and it was an encounter with a sofa at the age of three years old that led to an indirect discovery of my natural inclination towards the trade. But that is an entire story by itself, so here goes. At the age of three, one evening when my mom was busy cooking, I sneakily got hold of a very sharp instrument and set to work. My first stop was a sofa, which I quickly sliced beyond recognition. My second and third stops, before my mom caught up with me, were the second and third pieces of our three-piece sofa set. My mom was bewildered at the devastating sight of the sofas she walked in on. She quickly took the sharp object from me and promised she would report me to my dad. I was very scared thinking how my dad would react, so I devised a plan. The moment he got home, I went up to him with a pitiful look and said in my three-year-old baby voice, Daddy, I did something bad, but don't beat me. I cut up your chairs, but when I get big, I'll buy them back a hair. Then, I held his hand and brought him straight to the aftermath of the sofa disaster. He gave me a small smile and shook his head. I can still remember the hard crispy blue plastic like material on the sofa with the huge slices exposing the foam. Not trying to justify my wrongs, but in my defense, it was a very ugly sofa and clearly I had strong likes and dislikes in that regard from a very tender age. The sofa was eventually reupholstered and did its fair share until it was replaced. This sofa that I worked on was bought by my older brother at a well-known furniture store. On the day he bought it, he actually jokingly mentioned the story about me cutting the sofas and telling his friend that he was getting them for my dad on my behalf. Despite my brother's kind gesture, my desire for replacing those sofas for my dad never left my mind. And as I got older, the urge grew stronger, but never in the way of buying them back as I had sincerely promised. So, when the time eventually came for the featured sofa to be thrown out, I held on to it. I kept it for a long time, always revisiting my decision of keeping it or throwing it away due to the lack of space. But just like Moana, it kept calling me. And that's why I am now here fulfilling what I was destined to do. And this is how I did it. I started out by disassembling the sofa step by step. But first, here is what it looked like. I removed the seats and took off their cases and placed a piece of plywood in the seating area to replace the broken springs. I then removed the back which I ripped while being careful not to get pricked by any staples which I carefully removed from the fabric and also from the board afterwards using a flat screwdriver to pry and pliers to pull. I 
I then remove the sides following the same procedure and the front as well. I also pried off the arm caps using a flat screwdriver. I took off the foam at the front, revealing a gap between the boards. Next, I took off the final piece of fabric which covered the backrest. I opened up the thin layer of foam to reveal a dated form of stuffing known as coconut coir fiber. I took out all the coir and carefully dusted the frame to remove all the excess particles. I measured the entire perimeter of the cavity in the front along with the middle section across the back and cut plywood to fill those areas to accommodate and support button tucks. I then measured the distances and drilled the holes to facilitate the buttons. After which, I filled the bottom half portion of the back with a small fraction of coconut coir, being careful not to overdo it, considering that the original amount made the backrest rock solid, which provided no form of comfort. When I reached my desired capacity, I stapled the foam straight across on the newly attached backboard. The same method was carried out on the top half and as soon as I was satisfied with the quantity, I stapled the open end of the foam to the top section of the board. Next, I attached a layer of 1 inch foam over the top of the arms, followed by another layer over the entire surface of both arms. I then brought out the fabric and neatly attached it to the arms. I attached additional pieces of foam across various areas of the structure, including the front, the top, and the back of the arms. This was followed by covering the entire backrest with foam, which was attached using industrial spray adhesive, paying special attention to the indented area where the buttons would go. The drastic change in design at the back was inspired by a fellow YouTuber who does superb upholstery. His channel is Siva Sofa Tutorial and the link for the inspirational video can be found in the description. Up next, I added fabric to the back, then inserted the three original foam seats, which I firmly secured with glue. I covered them with three inches of foam along with batting and later the fabric. I needed half inch strips of thin cardboard to create neat seam edges at the areas where the fabric from the seat and front would join. I did not have any on hand and had to improvise using a mac and cheese box which did the job quite well.
After the connection was made, I carefully concealed the excess fabric of the sides and bottom. I measured, cut, and covered cardboard with batting to fit the open sides. I then attached the fabric using the improvised cardboard strips at the top on the wrong side of the fabric, then folding it over to reveal the right side with clean, stapleless seams. Next, I folded over the edges towards the front and secured them using shiny upholstery tack nails, and I hammered those in. The other two remaining sides were also concealed, stapling them under the bottom and towards the back. As I got closer to the point of completion, I took the two arm caps and pierced holes in the center of the largest areas, which I intended to add buttons. I added foam to the caps, covered them with batting, attached the fabric, and finally added the buttons then set them aside. It eventually came to the time when buttons were to be added to the overall sofa, my personal favorite, because that is always the moment when the item seems to come alive. Four sparkly diamond buttons were added to all the areas previously prepared to accommodate them. I covered the back using a different fall leather fabric that I had for quite some time, but did not plan on using for any beautification projects due to its heaviness, unforgiving non-stretch ability, and lifeless matte finish. It would have worked better had it been lighter and have stretch, but I tried my very best to get it to a workable state. All that was left to be done was to attach the arm caps, so I did, and my sofa was officially reupholstered. But to enhance my work, I went a step further and made some cushions, two regular 16 by 16 throws, a long narrow rectangular shaped one, and two cylindrical bolsters. But knowing me, I could not stop here. I had to bring out the exquisite wand and go the extra mile. Now, here is the big reveal. And here is my baby girl promoting my work with her mini fashion show. I must say, I was very pleased with the way it turned out, but nothing was more satisfying than seeing the huge smile on my father's face after the project was completely executed, and to think that this time it was a smile of approval. Priceless. And that's why it is always so important to follow your heart.
I hope you found this video interesting and I thank you so much for watching. As always, live good, love God, and keep being creative.